Well, thank you, and uh, thank you all for coming. Yes, when uh, travelling through Ireland or, you know, walking around Maynooth, uh, it's very prominent feature of the landscape is its past, the archaeological and historical sites that festoon the landscape. In this map here, we see uh, the distribution of, you know, just one kind of early medieval settlement uh, that exists in very, very dense pockets of the landscape, basically everywhere below 150 metres of sea level uh, has got intense uh, traces of, of, the, of the millennia of history of the human occupation of this island. And in recent years, uh, in recent decades, this has been augmented by a large data set that came from primarily from the Celtic Tiger era, when motorways were being built and when cities and towns were being expanded. Thanks to uh, planning policy, uh, archaeologists had to come and excavate any discoveries, sites that were found you know, before these places got bulldozed. And this has led to an accumulation of data, raw data, about you know, all the different periods in Ireland's past. And the challenge now exists in a very major way to make sense of this data, to add value to it, uh, to try to define it um, with new, basically turn that data into knowledge. So, you know, work out how to better categorize it, how to better analyze it, and really query it and ask it, does this tell us anything new and anything valuable about the world? So, uh, you know, here we see uh, Viking towns and medieval graveyards and Iron Age hill forts and Bronze Age burials, even even these huge stone villages that existed six thousand years ago in the Neolithic period, thousands and thousands, twenty three thousand or twenty five thousand of these sites exist. So, <clears throat> what I'm currently doing is gathering together and aggregating this archaeological and historical information re-evaluating its context, so applying new data ontologies to it, and trying to build time series of activity, so using a kind of econo econometric approach uh, to try to plot a, plot a graph, basically, a wiggly line stating how much information we have about each point in time, and then doing, through computer simulation experiments and data-driven modeling, you know, querying this to turn this data into, into real uh, statistics about what was going on in terms of the population density through time, the settlement density, and uh, how humans were responding to changes in their environment. So it's essentially an exercise in uh, data science and statistics, and this I think is one of the reasons why uh, there's been this turn in the humanities towards uh, you know, quantitative and digital approaches. Um, and it, it's an example of interdisciplinary research that shows how, uh, how well uh, different, you know, disciplines can work together, and my basis in the uh, Hamilton Institute is really due to that, that department's uh, traditions and providing a link, uh, you know, here in Maynooth between uh, the numerical sciences and their applications in various different settings. So my results aren't on screen because of some technical issue that I didn't think about, but uh, the. <laughs> We can see, uh, what we can now do is actually find uh, how, how quickly the past was changing. So we can find these growth rates and quantify them in the past. So look, in the back in the Stone Age, there was population growth at 1% per annum, for example. And that can be directly compared to the dynamics that we can see in the world today. And one of the, one of the take home messages is that uh, there was never just, there was, there was lots of growths and declines and rises and falls and booms and busts in the past. And explaining that and quantifying that is powerful because we can then compare the decline that exists in the world today in certain parts of the developed world and countries such as Italy and Japan are currently undergoing a demographic contraction that's similar in scale, in fact, to the, the ones Ireland's, Ireland experienced in prehistory. And this graph is one of the reasons why you know, we're not actually having uh, an event like this thousands of years ago, um, because uh, there's, what went up had to go back down again. It's also germane to look at uh, how climate and weather affected people and their population and their settlement uh, densities. So with my student, we're developing new sort of overviews of uh, studies of climate change that have already been done and how these compare to this new archaeological record, trying to look at you know, whether the climate and what changes that happened in the climate in the past affected human populations. And uh, the short answer is, uh, well, climate change happens so slowly. Uh, and really, 
over the course of the Holocene, so since the end of the Ice Age, uh, really so gradually that there wasn't too much of a direct impact. People had time to adapt, or their crops or their animals had time to evolve and develop some sort of uh, d uh, uh, capacity to deal with this. But what is more severe is actually weather events. And these weather events, uh, in other words, bad years, year or a decade of bad harvests, that is the sort of thing that can really undermine entire socio-economic systems. So we're developing new proxies looking at uh, evidence for, for bad weather. Um, and this is from looking at st the statistical analysis of uh, how trees were growing and comparing these to the archeological record. And in doing so, Again, the results have disappeared, but uh, there are periods in time like this one where there's positive association with these bad weather events. And then there's other periods of time like uh, here at the start of the Bronze Age, uh, where there was lots of bad weather, lots of harvest failures, but a resilience within that uh, society that enabled the growth to occur anyway. And so it's looking at that uh, uh, interaction between um, uh, avoiding these uh, reductionist cause and effect statements that really is what I mean by a new history of Ireland for the information age. So thank you very much.